it's alive. <laughs> it's alive. Okay, enough of the funny business. Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of our entire fourth season of LFF. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be talking about something large format. Uh, as you can see through the intro and by the shirt I've got on here, the main topic today is new FPP Frankenstein 200. FPP has been coming out with monster films for the last several years. They started with Wolfman, then Dracula last year, and this year, uh, following that same theme, we have Frankenstein. This is the first time one of FPP's films has featured something available in sheets, and that's what's really, really great. This is a 200-speed panchromatic black and white film that's based on their Cine 16 lineup of films. If you didn't know, filmphotographystore.com has one of the largest selections of films out there from sub-miniature all the way up to 8x10 large format. They also now offer cine films, so they're a great resource if you are into defunct formats and just really cool films you can't find anywhere else. I recommend checking it out, and yes, I've been a member of FPP for the longest time, but I don't make a dime from them. I just want to keep film photography going, and so does Mike, the guy that brought this to you. One of my favorite things about this film, above all else, is the price point. 25 sheets of FPP Frankenstein is $29.99, that's in US dollars. At the time of recording, this is the least expensive, fresh, panchromatic film on the market. I think that is a super powerful thing, especially in a time where film prices have never been higher, availability has never been more scattered. If you're just getting started in 4x5, I think this is a perfect film to load up into your holders, test around, and it's not too slow, not too fast, fits perfectly with learning the dance and more about your own developing procedures in the darkroom. In fact, let's go into the darkroom. I wanna talk about how I've handled this film in development. So let's start off with some of the baseline characteristics of FPP Frankenstein. This is a sheet of the 4x5 film. Don't worry, this has already been exposed. Uh, what you'll first notice is there is a single half circle notch code. And just like any large format film, the notch is gonna be in the upper right hand corner when the emulsion side is facing you. If you've ever had the pleasure of working with Fujifilm Acros in sheet film sizes, this is about the same thickness uh, as that. It doesn't seem like there are as many maybe anti-scratch or protective layers that there would be in like a major Kodak or Ilford film. Since this is not a Kodak film and basically cardboard like you would see with Tri-X or T-Max, I might recommend sitting this one out if you plan on tray processing your film. That may be because I'm pretty ham-fisted and used to slopping big sheets of 8x10 film, but when I did some tray processing of this, uh, after the film had soaked for more than about 20 minutes of total time, the emulsion was starting to fray a little bit in the corners. And again, that could be just because I'm used to larger sheets and just kind of slopping those around. If you're using rotary processing with like the 20th century camera reels, or you're using like a Stearman press tank, I think this will do fine in that. Or if you're doing any other alternative method of developing that includes less touching. Uh, what I ended up going with, because I'm used to them as well, was using stainless steel hangers and tanks. Those are a great way for me to work with films that have especially sensitive emulsions. It did great in the hangers and tanks, and I could even do this in like a semi-stand development if I wanted to draw out that developing time. I found when using traditional developers on this film, like HC110, D76, or FPP D96, this film did excellently right at ISO 200. There was a couple times I maybe underexposed a bit, and other times where I overexposed a bit and came out great. So one of the biggest things that threw me off about this film was once I started testing it out in my developer of choice, Pyrocat HD. The only baseline for a similar film I had was for Ilford FP4 and Delta 100, which have significantly longer developing times, as I came to find out. When I gave it the FP4 developing time, which is roughly 12 minutes, that was way, way, way too much, and I was effectively pushing film, but I didn't know it until I did my Stouffer step wedge test, like I outlined in season three uh, during the film testing episode. If you really want to get to know uh, a new emulsion, that's the best way to do it, is to sacrifice a few sheets with the Stouffer wedge, do the proper testing uh, that I outline and I share Alex Bond's post. It's a great way to go. If you follow the charts that you see on the Film Photography Store page for Frankenstein, you're going to be good to go. If you're using a pyro developer, I recommend rating this film at 
half of box speed, so closer to 100, maybe 125 ISO. That would be the sweet spot for this film. In terms of how the negatives look, the contrast range of these, I think the contrast is great. It's a little bit softer. I find I need to pump the contrast harder on this. So if you plan on doing processes like contact printing, enlarging, something where you are applying more dodge and burn, this film's gonna be right at home. So in seeing how well this did in high contrast environments, I took the studio with my good buddy, Tariq Terry. We set up a shoot with a model, her name was Dia, and it was awesome. We had a lot of controlled lighting. We compared this versus some T-Max 400, so definitely an apples to oranges comparison, but it was really amazing to see that the lighting took care of most of the heavy lifting. I did need to apply a little bit of extra contrast to the Frankenstein shots versus the T-Max shots to really make things match up, but that's, that's all part of the process. I never try to do anything in like a straight print. I, I don't believe in such a thing, but if you know your craft and you know exposure and you can cater development to what you want to do, this is a great film to do it with. So just who is this film for? I think FPP Frankenstein 200 sits at a perfect place in the market if you are just getting started in large format photography. And that's because this is a really affordable price point. It's a little bit over a dollar per sheet of 4x5 at a time where Ilford and Kodak films are $2 and $3.5 per sheet USD, respectively. It's going to be worth burning through a few extra sheets of this film learning the ropes versus taking a super high risk on maybe something you don't even know you like yet. I've always recommended like paper and x-ray film in the past, but if you want the most inexpensive panchromatic film that you can get a hold of, FPP Frankenstein is gonna be it right here. I also received some questions from you guys into the LFF mailbox about FPP Frankenstein, and I wanted to save them until this episode so I could make sure everybody had access to those answers. Uh, one of the most common questions I received in the LFF mailbox is, what is this film? Honestly, guys, I don't know. I'm only going off of the information that I know, which is the same stuff that you can see on the Film Photography Store's page. Uh, what I can say, it's a great film. It's truly panchromatic. It behaves much like other 200 speed traditional grain emulsions that are out there, and going by a data sheet for that is is gonna be accurate for what you can expect from FPP Frankenstein. So enjoy it at that price point. Another question I received was about the reciprocity characteristics of this film. So reciprocity failure is as your exposure gets less and less and less, uh, that sensitivity or response goes just off a cliff. I wasn't really given a table when I, I had this film out to test, but I did do a few exposures that were longer than one half of a second. And I can say for any exposures you do that are one second or longer, you are gonna need some pretty hefty compensation. And I would really, really recommend keeping your exposures to a metered time of 10 seconds or less. By the time you're at 10 seconds, you are well over a minute of compensation needed for this specific film. All in all, a four x five film that is at the entry point of pricing in the market, but still panchromatic and still quite reliable. Uh, this is at the top of my recommend list for anybody just getting into large format or somebody that needs a lot of film to complete a project. So I'm gonna drop a link in the description below, uh, as well as a card if they'll let me to filmphotographystore.com. Also, another reminder, we have a few weeks left with our undo pinhole giveaway. This is a spectacular camera that was donated in by Joe, and I just wanted to showcase a few more things about this guy because I think it's just so cool. It's got magnets here, so those, those clip on and hold our film holder in place. So uh, the winner of this camera isn't just gonna get the camera in the box, they're also gonna get a film holder that they can use to shoot their very first shot of large format. Okay, open up. And look at that, isn't that great? It's got such a cool look to it. It's also got levels up top here. It's got tripod sockets on the side and the bottom. This is just a beautiful piece of kit and I can't wait to announce the winner. According to the subs list, there's thousands of you out there. So be sure to head to the link below. No cost or subscription or anything required. Just share this link out to anybody that needs or wants a large format camera. So thanks again for stopping by. 
Uh, as always, if you have any questions, you can feel free to drop those down below in the comments. And for any of the longer form questions, you can shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Caveat to the questions, I am in massive email debt at the moment. So if you haven't seen a reply from me, be patient. I'm a one man band and that inbox uh, gets really clogged up this time of year. So please be patient, uh, but feel free to keep sending those questions. I will do my best to get to them in the order in which they're received. Oh, and if you're, uh, if you're an LFF sustaining member, uh, you do get priority access at the $10 per month level. That is one of the perks of becoming an LFF sustaining member. So thanks again for stopping by and uh, we'll catch you next week for more LFF.